Hello, Covenant people of God. You're welcome to Encounters with the Past Seeds. Our topic for today is sleep through it. Sleep through it. Now prophesy to yourself. Say, I will sleep through that situation. I will sleep through that difficulty. I will sleep through that challenge. And as you do that, the Lord shall come and, and abide with you and give you solution to that problem in Jesus' name. Amen. Our key text is taken from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verses 1 to 3 and verses 6. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex setting of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. With the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. There were the days of a living bread. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Imagine, somebody that they want to kill the next day was sleeping. Now let us look at the backgrounds and the thoughts of the text. Come with me. Have you ever had the opportunity to travel somewhere for the first time? Or perhaps you got a new job or scholarship to study at your dream school, notice that you won't sleep the way you normally do. I have never seen anyone about to die sleep peacefully on the eve of his death. Can you imagine that? Somebody that would die on the eve of his death is sleeping. He no worries. He just said Hakuna Matata and he went to sleep. Can you imagine that? We need to know what was behind this. Come with me. There's always a restlessness to find a way out of such an untimely death sentence. Peter's case was quite contradictory to what is naturally obtainable as he slept without interruption. Now from the beginning, for instance, you travel to a new place or you go into a new environment, you hardly sleep. You want to keep watch. You want to know what is this environment like. You can't sleep. Even when you visit a house for the first time, let alone where the pronouncement is sentence, and of all sentences, a death sentence has been pronounced over one's head. Would you sleep? That very night, you will call down the heavens. You will cry out your eyes. But Peter slept through it. But then, why was he so comfortable asleep when he was just about to be killed? Was it carelessness? Was it indifference or complacency? Didn't he understand the implication of being killed at that time? Didn't he realize the effect his death would have had on the church? Ironically, I think he understood the effect his death would have had on the church. Hence his reaction. Rather than react the way everyone else would have reacted in such a situation, he slept through the situation. Ah, Peter knew that his death would cause a great calamity to the church. He knew the persecution the church would suffer. When he died, he knew what it would amount to. And instead of worrying, he did what? He slept through it. Now, what does it mean to sleep through a situation? To sleep through a situation is to remain calm in the face of challenges. Because quietness and confidence shall be your strength. You, shall, you can see that in Isaiah chapter 30 verses 15. Imagine Jesus and evil Judah. You remember when Jesus was in the boat with his disciples and there was storm? Peter was afraid and he said, Oh Lord, you are asleep. Do you not care that we die? Jesus was sleeping in the boat and there was storm. Now evil Judah, who was guilty of an offense, sleeping on a boat amid the storm. You remember Judah? When God sent him to go to deliver and tell the people if they don't repent of their sins, he would destroy them in three days. He ran away. He ran away. And he knew he had offended God. He was sleeping in the boat amid the storm. 
you can see these examples and I believe it will motivate and encourage you. It may not make sense how deeply they slept, but they showed us that it is possible to be in a storm and not feel it because you are resting in God. When you rest on the promises of God, you see that even the, the worst situation, you, you, you just look at it and you sleep through it. Now let us look at how we can apply this text to our daily lives. Some situations can never change. Some situations can never change no matter what you do. Worry and anxiety don't solve problems. Instead, they compound the problems. Neither does fear or panic change anything. Fear does not change anything. Panic does not change anything. Anxiety does not change anything. Instead, it becomes detrimental to your health. For every problem, there must be a solution. And the solution comes by strategy. Fear, anxiety, or panic are not strategies for solving problems. When you are afraid, oh, my house rent has expired. What do I do? You're panicking. My children's school fees have not been paid. September is here already. I don't even have the school fees to pay their, I don't even have the money to pay their school fees. You are afraid. You are anxious. Will the money come? No. Instead, you give yourself high blood pressure. You see that you're now compounding the problem. Now, what do you do to, towards that? So, where you do not have a strategy, do well to provoke divine intervention. Instead of bringing up fear, you provoke the heavens. You provoke divine intervention. If you ever find yourself in a no escape zone, take the following steps to provoke divine intervention. Let us look at them one after the other. Number one. Make the church a covering for you. Make the church a covering for you. The lead pastor of Gate International Church is a covering that we have here. He's a covering Gate International Church has. And so when you're in such a situation, you call on the God of Pastor George Zuma and he definitely will come for you. Number two, be conscious of the anointing of God on your life. The day you receive God, the day you receive Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior, His anointing was poured on you. His oil was poured afresh on you. So you be conscious of the anointing of God in your life. Number three, transition from faith to trust. You transit from faith to trust. Trust God every step of the way and follow his directives. Just like a blind man would trust the person who is leading him. That is how you trust God. You trust him that he will bring you out of the situation. You trust God that he will make a way where there seems to be no way. After all, he promised in his word that he shall make a way in the wilderness. Hallelujah. And number four, control your mind with the word of God. You have no other thing to control your mind with. After all, the Bible said in Romans that you should renew your mind. So with the word of God, you can change every situation. With the word of God, you can make the worst situation bring, come out and there will be no problems at all. So you renew your mind on the word of God. And finally, most importantly, speak and execute peace. Speak peace. Seek for the peace that only Jesus can give. Sleep through it. And be assured that he gives his beloved sleep. Hallelujah. And as you sleep through that situation, God shall come through for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us say this prayer together. With your right hand lifted up. Father, thank you for your promise of peace. I will not be swallowed up by situations and circumstances. I speak peace right now to every raging storm in Jesus' name. Amen. Action points. Practice the steps above and go about your day undisturbed. Let me repeat those points again. Make the church a covering for you. Be conscious of the anointing of God on your life. Transit from faith to trust. Control your mind on the word of God and speak peace. As you do this, there will be provocation of divine intervention on your life, on that situation, on that circumstance, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us on this special edition of Encounters with the Past Saints. My name is Abi Corbury and Otobo. Keep watching Life Center Network for life-changing programs. Do have an amazing and blessed day ahead. There are men that rise by labor. 
there are others that rise by favor there are men that toil their way to the top there are others the oil of God takes to the top I am a man held by God his oil has lifted me to the top and today I want to invite you to encounter that God that lifts men to encounter the God that changes destiny to encounter a God that answers prayer to encounter a God that can make you what you want to be I want to invite you to meet a God that can never fail and today your life we change for good. Is it Chimo? Oh, yeah, Is it Chimo? Oh, yeah, Is it Chimo? Is it Chimo? You're the God who never, never, never fails. 